everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm gonna to talk about the Sound Blaster X5, Creative's latest high-end headphone amp DAC system. Um, this is a really unique product. The feature set is, is like nothing else I've covered, especially in this price range. Doesn't mean it's the best thing in the world for you. You're gonna find out at the end of this review if it is or not. Uh, this was sent to me for review by Sound or by Creative. So huge thanks to them. Um, I've had this product for a couple months now. I've been asked about this review for a couple months, both on Discord and the various forums uh, and comments that I've seen on YouTube. So um, it took a lot of testing, I'll be honest. There were some things that didn't work as well at launch that were uh, fixed in a firmware update. I've had some email exchanges that got passed to their engineers, which are in a different country, so there's some time lag there. Um, but I wanted to provide as much of an honest review as I can. I run a very unbiased channel and I love and dislike products from all different brands. So uh, by the end of this review, hopefully you find out if this is the right one for you or not. But with that being said, let's dive in. So let's start with the basics. What's in the box? Um, you have the X5, of course, which is a fairly large plastic chassis. I'll talk about that more closely in a moment. You have this fairly thick, robust USB-A to C cable because this has a USB-C port in the back. It has a 3.5 millimeter to RCA uh, Y adapter cable, which is you know about six feet long. Then you have an optical cable as well. All right, so let's go through the front layout real quick. You have your power button here, which is a push button. And when you turn it on and off, you'll hear a relay inside turn on and off. Bluetooth button, uh, by default, mine will connect every time I turn it on. That's a setting in the software you can do. Mute button for the microphone. Display will show you various things like what EQ, if you're in speaker or headphone mode, and if you have a microphone, it'll tell you, um, you know, your mic setting, sensitivity, et cetera. High gain and normal. So this is literally just a volume boost. If you have a headphone that's harder to drive, you can toggle between headphone and speaker mode. Speaker mode uses the RCA output on the back to connect to an amp. There's no speaker amplifier built in. Direct DSP will actually toggle all of the sound filters and changes you can make through software. Direct mode basically bypasses everything. So you're having a pure DAC sent straight to your headphone. Um, EQ is pretty self-explanatory. That's where you're gonna to toggle between your three EQ presets or off. And then your switch here is to console mode. If you switch it down, basically it's UAC one ready and that'll work perfectly fine on PlayStation 5 and 4. Of course you have your uh, volume wheel here, which is plastic. Microphone input, headphone out unbalanced and then headphone out balanced. This is a 4.4 connection. This doesn't say it on the front, but this middle jack, the headphone out on balance, is also TRRS compliant, meaning that if you have a headset that has a single plug that combines the audio and the microphone into one plug, you can use that middle plug and it'll work. You don't have to split it off into two. If you have something like the Epos H6 Pro, which comes with the breakout cable to split the two, use it because you will get better performance on the sound and it's less likely that you'll have crosstalk or feedback getting pumped back into the mic. So split it when you can. If you can't, it's no big deal. It'll still work. Flipping on to the back, curiously, you have uh, the analog in and out, which is great. Um, it can do a bypass and the output is modified by the uh, box inside. So if you are doing custom EQ or any audio changes, it will make those changes on the output. You have optical in and out with pass through. You can enable Dolby pass through on here to do the 24 bit 192 in case you don't wanna do any stereo processing. USB-C, so that is your power and your DAC connection to your computer, and USB host, uh, which if you have a compatible device, you can actually plug something like a, a creative headset that uses a USB dongle, and the X5 can actually modify the sound output going to this adapter so you can customize the sound through a wireless option as well. Curiously and unfortunately, there's no XLR back here. I wish it had it at this price range, but that covers the IO. So that covers the inputs and outputs. I just wanna show you the chassis. It is all plastic. It's very lightweight. Honestly, for the price point, you would think that it'd be a little bit more robust feeling. Here's the thing, it feels well made to me, but it doesn't feel like super high-end and premium at this price range. When you look at something like the topping A30, D30 stack, you know, something that's more metal or a there, there's other products that are more closely in line. Even the shit products like the Magni Modi stack, which is less, uses a metal uh, aluminum chassis. So they're fitting a lot in this price range. So I'm assuming that's part of why they did it. I will say one nice thing about the plastic 
is it doesn't really show the fingerprints that that well, uh, which is nice. So as far as like dusting and maintenance, it should hold up for a long period of time. The volume knob is plastic as well. Nothing metal pretty much anywhere to be found. All right, so the X5 has so many specs and feature sets and all these things that they talk about and brag about because they're excited about the product. Uh, I'm gonna start with the DAX. This uses two Cirrus Logic DAX in a fully balanced configuration. It's the whole XAMPP technology that's found in other Sound Blaster products, but this is done at a higher level. Um, the Cirrus Logic DAX is the same ones used in something like the Topping D30 Pro, which is an excellent DAC. It's also found in something like Astel and Kern's um, more expensive DAPs, the music players. So it's a really good DAC chip. It has a good reputation for the past few years of being a solid performer, very low distortion, etc. It always comes down to the full implementation. It's not like just having that automatically makes it an audiophile grade product, but it's certainly a good starting point. As far as sample rates go, it actually goes from 16-bit 44.1 all the way up to 32-bit 384 kilohertz. It is a massive range of sample rates that you can choose from. And I will say one of the best things about it is it maintains low latency in all of those. Something like the Shit Hell 2, which is a $200 amp DAC with a microphone input, it's very sensitive to the sample rate you pick. It actually does affect latency on Windows, where that wasn't the case with the X5. Now, the X5 also supports ASIO 2.2, um, so if you, it's AI, or sorry, ASIO 2.2, and it does DSD up to 256, thanks to those uh, Cirrus Logic DACs. A lot of this stuff may sound like uh, random jargon. Um, if you know what that feature is, just hearing it is a good thing. Basically, it's allowing you to maintain a higher quality uh, sound. Uh, if you're using a DSD music track, like a FLAC uh, audio file, you can run it in DSD mode, which can sound great. Obviously, a more limited library. And then the ASIO support, if you're using a, a mixer interface software, uh, or just want the lower latency benefits, um, this has native support for that. And when you plug it in, it actually prompts you to install the driver too. Creative also claims a dynamic range of 130 decibels, which is massive. That's basically your quietest part to the loudest part. How much can you fit in between? How well does it scale? A small dynamic range typically means things sound more compressed. That's just all on paper. Now I'm gonna show you some specs on the screen. There's just too much to discuss verbally. So feel free to pause it now and focus on the specs that matter to you. So I wanted to show you the software real quick because there's a lot of stuff you can do. And frankly, that's really where this thing kind of stands out as a unique product. But I did want to show you the sample rates. As you can see, you have 16-bit 44.1 uh, kilohertz. And then you can go all the way down. You see several 24-bit options all the way up to the 32-bit 384. So let's show you the software. All right, so now you're looking at the home screen of the Sound Blaster X5 software. And just real quick, if you go to settings right here on the left, and click on application. This is how you set it in dark mode. By default, it's in white. So if you install yours and yours is white, don't panic, just change it there. So the device, there are a lot of things you can change. I'm gonna start with the equalizer because that's something a lot of people are looking at this for. It is a fixed 10 band equalizer. So no parametric EQ, which means I can't choose the exact frequency I'm adjusting or the Q, which is basically how wide of an adjustment you're making on that frequency. However, it is a 10 band and it's, it's versatile enough where it can fix a lot of issues. Um, not perfect, but again, you can save these on board or disable it. I do wanna show you that if you do a custom EQ uh, like this one, this isn't for a specific tune, by the way, this is just me messing around, and you adjust the bass up and down, it'll provide a general lift in the lower bass region, then you can see it doing something similar in treble. So those are just you know a general sweep. Uh, in addition to whatever your custom EQ is, it'll just tweak the curve a little bit or tilt it, if you will. Now, I also wanna show you Crystal Voice. Crystal Voice is a microphone modification uh, feature and that does translate into PS5 and PS4 usage as well. You have noise cancellation, acoustic echo, which is gonna uh, basically filter out some of the stuff and feedback picked up in your microphone. Um, smart volume, which is adjusting your microphone gain automatically. So if you talk soft and then scream, it's not gonna distort your mic or at least it'll lower the gain so you don't. Voice morph is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to sound like a marine or a chipmunk or a robot, you can do that there. And then one of my favorites is the equalizer because depending on your microphone, you might have one that's more harsh or thin sounding like a Steel Series mic, or you might some have something that has that warm podcast sound to it like a VZR Model 1 mic. If, you, if it doesn't complement your voice well or you want to adjust it, you can pick any of these presets and customize the way your voice sounds on the mic, which is really nice. So I'm gonna turn these off for now and go back. Now, 
the mixer. This to me is one of the coolest features of this device um, because it's not explicitly advertised to me, at least when I first looked at the website. You can, you can combine, if you notice this had several inputs on the back, there's no way to change inputs. That's because it combines them all simultaneously. Now it has Bluetooth 5.0 SBC only. So this is not an audiophile grade Bluetooth DAC support. Um, this is good for like playing a YouTube video in the background or hearing notifications from your phone or a Discord call. Um, but it can combine Bluetooth, your USB DAC, optical, and the auxiliary input all into one onto your headphone or IEM or whatever you're using. Then if you go in the mixer software like you see here for monitoring, you can adjust the sliders for each one independently separate from your gain on, on the USB audio. So whatever you want to hear in the background, you can easily adjust that. And I think that is such a killer feature because I, I tested this. I had line in coming from one device. I had optical coming from the other TV next to that Sony over there. Um, and that was playing a Netflix show. Then I had my phone playing something. It sounds like overkill because it is, but I did want to test it and I was able to listen to all of it with ease. Um, so it's a pretty slick feature. If that's not cool enough, check this out. If I click these little dots here, you can balance the left and right input separately on every source. So if you have, let's say the aux input is feeding your notifications from a, a Twitch live stream, for example, but you only want to hear it on the left ear cup, so it's just easier to, to distinguish, you can just fade that all the way to left and cut the right one out altogether. It's these little things that can make your quality of life easier. And I think the X5 where it's unique is the ability to tinker with all of these settings. Conversely, with recording, you can actually incorporate those audio feeds into the mic output that goes into your computer. So on your computer, under your recording settings, where you choose your microphone, if you choose the X5 as the microphone, you can actually send some of this audio back into that microphone signal, which is helpful for live streaming and recording as well. So there's a lot of versatility that you can do thanks to this box. That's really important for something like a PlayStation 5. Um, if you're trying to hear on your headphone at the same time that you want your computer to record it, PlayStation 5 doesn't make it easier to send audio into two devices at once. Well, now it's possible with something like this. And I mentioned the optical pass-through. If you click on device, you can see stereo mix and then you can see SPDIF pass-through. And it tells you what each one does and what your sample rate needs to be for it to work properly but it's nice that it has that feature. So if I go to scout mode, scout mode is an insane feature that to some people they're gonna absolutely love, some may not care for it, but for the FPS side of things, if you enable scout mode, it's like it laser focuses on footstep type sounds and boosts it differently than what smart volume does or a sound compressor, but I strongly suggest trying this out because to me this is a really unique feature for the FPS side. The X5 is weird because they're marketing it as an audiophile headphone amp DAC and not so much a gaming product. They still included scout mode, but they did not include the SXFI feature, which is like their binaural audio engine that's found in other less expensive uh, Sound Blaster products. So it's kind of a weird omission. I did ask about that and that was intentional. Um, I think they just didn't want too much overlap on the gamer focus stuff, but it is what it is. So. Definitely try scout mode for FPS. I think it does give an advantage in certain games uh, and headphones. But as always with stuff like that, it all comes down to preference. Your mileage may vary. Direct mode, I mentioned this earlier and if I push this button um, on the front here, you can see it on the software. Direct mode was enabled on the software and I'll press it again and now it's off. <clears throat> and now I can do sound mode. Sound mode and acoustic engine are pretty weird on the X5 because it does some fancy things that you won't know unless you click on. Um, here's the acoustic engine. Now if I click on headphone mode and turn any of these on, I guess I should have um, uh, an, an active output, but you can have surround on and off, crystallizer, which is effectively boosting dynamic range and adding a little bit more sparkle on top, bass boost, in addition to the other bass boost I already showed you on the EQ, Smart volume, which adjusts your volume gain automatically. This is not a audio compressor that some people like, like norm loudness normalization that people are starting to use with FPS games. Not the same thing. It's too slow to react 
Um, and just to show you, I actually measured that. So let me go to Smart Volume. Basically what Smart Volume does is it boosts the gain. It's almost like turning the volume wheel up. And then if there's an explosion, it effectively is virtually turning the volume knob down a little bit. It's not compressing the sound through software as a filter. So yes, when it's very quiet, footsteps are gonna be incredibly loud. It boosts it like crazy. As soon as there is an explosion or a voice makes a sound or a, a gunshot happens, it reduces all of the volume. Then you really can't hear any footsteps. So for FPS, smart volume, hard pass. It's really intended as like a one second delay um, of adjusting volume as stuff comes in. And that's evident here. I had no signal going to uh, the X5. Then as soon as I played a tone, it started at this volume level. And as the tone started playing, the X5 smart volume automatically lowered the sound. It stabilized, you know, so you're looking at literally, this is what, 79 decibels all the way up to 95. So there's a pretty large decibel swing. And then after a while it stabilized and kind of brought itself back up towards the end of that loop. So again, not really for FPS, but it, I guess it could help for movies. Uh, if you're watching something at night and you don't want loud things uh, waking you up or disturbing you. And then the dialogue enhancer is exactly what it is. It, it helps boost vocal performance. Here's what's weird. If I click on sound mode, you can see this drop down. Effects, it says gaming, music, adventure, Call of Duty, Battle Royale, Cyberpunk. They have a ton of EQs using the audio engine for specific games or types of games. So I wanna show you one. Let's click on Apex Legends. So now it says Equalizer Apex Legends. What it didn't tell me, what I didn't know, is it also enabled the virtual surround feature and the crystallizer. The virtual surround adds a ton of reverbs to it. So I'm actually, I recorded that so I can show you what the surround option does. So here's the frequency response me me being measured with everything set to flat EQ, but the virtual surround system enabled. You get very inconsistent frequency response and that's because it's trying to mimic a surround sound effect without any doing any of the surround sound processing. It's particularly done in reverbs and phasing and stuff. It makes things sound incoherent and busy and is not used for FPS. You can try it for movies. You may enjoy it for movies because it's just a different way of mixing. I'm not gonna tell you this is a good or bad feature, but what I can tell you is enabling a surround feature like this on an FPS game by default made the game harder for me to pinpoint footsteps. That included Apex Legends and Call of Duty. Also, interestingly enough, is the Apex Legends has the exact same frequency response as the FPS preset. It's tuned the same. I actually measured, you can see this giant list. I measured every single preset. They're not all here because I had to condense, but here's um, Apex Legends, and here is, let me get the word of the surround sound, uh, EQ. So I have Apex Legends and the Footsteps Enhancer. Here's the EQ of Footsteps Enhancer. That's how the X5 is changing the sound. And here's the EQ of Apex. It's the exact same tune. So some of the presets are cool because they feel more unique and some of them are very unique. You know, we look at PUBG, that one's totally different. You look at Fortnite, that one's different. That's a little bit less aggressive. And then on the Call of Duty one, Battle Royale and Call of Duty BR, uh, it, or Call of Duty is the exact same EQ as well. So there's some measured proof that the EQs aren't unique in certain situations. What I can tell you is this might be fun to try. Just play with it, see what you like. Just be sure to turn off that surround sound feature or if you, if you are using custom EQ, especially on the FPS side, because to me it makes a big difference on being able to pinpoint stuff. This is a really long part of this review, but I cannot stress this enough because this is the stuff you actually use when you start setting these. I would maybe start with the preset, then go to your acoustic engine and turn these off, and then go in your custom EQ and make your changes from there. And again, you can save these. So if I did this particular EQ and I like it, all I have to do, let's, um, let's click this one. So now I have my own preset, and if I hit save and I do, let's see, Let's do gadgetry tech, a little shameless plug, hit okay. Now it says gadgetry tech. And then if I look at my amplifier, you can actually see that preset show up. 
under EQ2. I will say before I stop recording on my computer screen, I measured it in flat and it is indeed flat. And then I also did like the extreme EQ presets to see how much of a change it could do by doing max min. So you can see that between each band, you know, you're getting, if your uh, midpoint is 85 and then it's dropping down to about 76, it is effectively doing a nine decibel swing up and down um, for every um, band that you're adjusting. That's your max and minimum change. All right, now I'm talking to you using the microphone preamp built into the X5 uh, with the gain set about halfway using an EPOS H6 Pro headset. So the microphone gain is an interesting one. It's not a physical or analog gain adjustment. It's purely digital and it doesn't affect the input signal that your mic is sending to the X5. It's only changing the volume that it's sending to your computer or your PlayStation. So yes, you can turn your volume up and down. However, if it's a very sensitive mic and it's very close to your mouth and you shout, it will still distort even if you have the gain set too low. There's no way to bypass that. Um, there is a trick. So if you, what helped me reduce the distortion is when you go to the mixer and you can see the microphone show up here on the right hand side, just click those dots and disable microphone boost. That reduced the distortion for me. I had to basically boost my microphone analog signal up or my digital signal up so it would be loud enough for capturing and playing with friends. However, I noticed there wasn't as much distortion. I do want to say that the uh, microphone side tone, which is this uh, adjustment right here, uh, is excellent. It gets very, it's real time, it's fairly clear, um, and there's a huge amount of flexibility as far as adjusting how much you hear of yourself. It's not like a low, medium, high. So you can dial it in, the side tone works uh, really well. And then of course I mentioned the crystal voice uh, earlier, so you can do voice morph and I'm making the changes to my voice. As you hear it, let's uh, make it sound like a uh, elderly person. So this is my voice with the elderly uh, preset, if you will. Let's go into Marine. This is the Marine preset. Now I'm talking to you as a chipmunk and I guess we'll do robot. And now I'm talking to you as a robot, so let's turn that back off. So this is what it sounds like. Microphone's not bad. It sounds good. It's just very sensitive if you have a sensitive mic and there's not a lot of ways you can combat that. Now as far as PS5 support goes, the X5 works great on it. It has that USC one mode so it works perfectly fine. That includes the microphone and the headphone. Then if you also want to do custom EQ while you're not connected to a computer, you can do that via the Bluetooth app. So right now it's grayed out because it's off. So I'm going to flip that switch on tap it and now I can adjust all of my frequency response here which is really cool. You can also do, if you go to the mixer, uh, I showed you that feature earlier, you can adjust all your audio inputs and outputs and if you click on the dots you still get the left and right channel mix as well. You can't do the advanced features like scout mode or that audio engine for the virtual surround and smart volume and all that stuff. Um, you have to do that on the computer but as far as the basics go for what's really important on PlayStation, having the ability to do the equalizer, direct mode if you want to bypass it, and the mixer to adjust your audio sources, that's still a huge bonus. So let's talk about sound quality. Uh, one of the most important parts that surprisingly I'm not going to spend as much time on because a lot of what makes this un unique is the feature side. The downside with the X5, because this has a single USB-C cable, there's no dedicated power supply, so don't expect a super robust, high performing power output. That's what you get a JDS Atom stack for, for 200 which is an amplifier and a DAC with zero other features or the shit Magni Modi stack. Um, those are all, again, no extra software or control, just a high quality sound performing amp DAC. This still sounds good. So that whole signal to noise ratio thing, the low distortion, what that all translates to is there's no hiss, there's no hums. This is fairly responsive. Even though it's a digital volume knob, it's telling Windows to adjust the volume. This isn't two independent volumes. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, so when it comes to actual sound, here's the thing. It's crystal clear and it's quiet, meaning that if you have a classical song or something that's dead silent in the movie or the song, if this is cranked, this isn't going to add any extra hiss. So it's well done there. It also performs exceptionally well for imaging. If you have something that's supposed to be dead center, like a, a song where the artist's voice cuts right through the middle, this is going to preserve that. It does a great job at maintaining imaging also does a great job of maintaining extremely low latency, which is really important for gamers. The custom EQ can change some of the dynamics of this amp um, to either give you more treble, more bass, etc. But in pure direct mode, 
this is not as musical sounding as a higher end audio product that does nothing but amplify a clean sound. It sounds slightly more compressed and it sounds, uh, I guess, very sterile. It's not that it's bad and I think unless you have like a higher end headphone amp to compare it to, some people may not hear the difference. I will say this though, the reason why I say that, it is so reliant on a strong USB cable uh, signal for power, it drastically changes the sound. Um, I was using the USB-C cable that I was powering my Epos GSX-1000 with. And I was like, this is a little more lifeless than I was hoping for. That seems to not sound as good as that price tag is asking. I finally switched to this cable, the included cable, and plugged it into a different port. It was a very different sounding experience and it's very noticeable in the bass region. You can boost bass, but it doesn't seem to have that same oomph or power behind it unless you feed it a strong signal. I also found that the balanced output does an even better job at preserving the dynamics of music. So if you're debating whether you need to run balanced or not simply for the power output increase that this provides, also consider it for the dynamics improvement as well. Purely as an audiophile based product, if you're looking at it at that way, I would recommend trying to use balanced because you're gonna get the most out of the X5 after you provide it the necessary power. Now you may already have some balanced connections and I wanted to show you this cable. I bought this for $40 online uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. It's a balanced cable, 4.4 millimeter Pentacon, and then you have a really high quality XLR output. That allows me to use cables that I've already owned for other balanced amplifiers to run fully balanced to a larger, for in my case, a planar magnetic headphone like the HE1000SE, which benefits from more power. So I just did this so I didn't have to buy a whole new collection of cables. Otherwise, whether you're using IEMs or not, it's it's this has enough adjustability between low gain and high that you can power uh, very sensitive IEMs with really no issues on noise levels or hiss, um, all the way up to much more demanding planar magnetic headphones. Just use the high gain if you're at 600 ohm. So. Um, I'm not going to say this is the best sounding product at $300 purely as an amplifier because it's not. It's being held back by this one cable that's also powering Bluetooth and a screen and this audio mixer and all this other stuff that's happening inside. It requires some extra juice and it's sharing that. So you can only get so much out of it. I will say considering that it's one of the better performers out there. The only one that's performed better than this purely on USB-C power is the Shit Hell 2 which has a dual USB-C input. And that thing is so picky on power that if you don't have a good enough signal, it doesn't even turn on. It comes with its own separate power supply for one of the plugs just to juice it up enough to work. So, well, this is a solid performer for imaging and clarity and cleanliness, not so much on the dynamics and overall power uh, and just oomph behind the track. I just wanna quickly touch on competitors real fast. So this is the shit hell two I was talking about. It's really the only other, other one I would consider with a remotely similar price range. Um, obviously much smaller, metal chassis, $200. Has a really good microphone preamp input as well with an adjustable knob, volume, a ton of power. This one's a uh, very powerful amplifier. It gets louder than the X5. Um, this has no EQ, no Bluetooth, no custom mixer, any of that stuff. It's purely if you want a good, powerful, clean output via USB. So if you don't care to EQ, you just want a USB-C power DAC, the Hell 2 is probably gonna give you the most power behind that. Then going the other direction, the GSX-1000, this is the new one, the Gen 2, not as powerful as the X5, it's also $200, has the game to chat mix on the side, which is a nice feature because both of these do not. That game to chat mix is for PC only. Um, but the thing with the X5, it has an amazing binaural audio engine, so if you like the idea of a virtual sound done well, um, this has been an absolute blast to use for that. There's no custom EQ here either, and at $200, it's also less powerful um, than the Hell 2. Also doesn't have the quarter inch that this does, it doesn't have balanced like this does. So they're very different products. I will say the only other one to consider, if you just wanna hook up a headset to a PlayStation 5 because you wanted custom EQ, SteelSeries is now selling the Game Deck uh, Gen 2 separately at 130. It's not as powerful as this, it doesn't sound as good as this, but it does still give you the same 10 band EQ that this does. So if you just want something good enough for something like an Epos H6 Pro or a Drop or a VZR, um, you can buy that $130 DAC just as a basic DAC 
with EQ. It's not gonna have Bluetooth or all the mixer features, but again, it's it's literally half the price. Uh, so uh, something to look at. And lastly, the bugs and gremlins. Some issues I ran in with or observations. What's weird about this is the pops it makes. When you plug in a headset or headphone, I get a popping sound on my headset or headphone. IEMs especially, it's very sensitive to that. They use a series of relays in here, but there's no weird, there's no extra filtering or anything that's preventing some of the noise from that switchover happening in the box from going out to your headphone or, or driver. Um, that can be a bad thing. It is really bad on PlayStation 5. If this is on like it is now, and you're wearing IEMs or a sensitive headphone, and you shut down your PlayStation 5 while this is running, the loud pop that hits your head is, it's pretty bad. It can damage your ears, or if you're wearing IEMs, I think there's a good chance it can damage IEMs. So if you're using this for PS5, turn it down, maybe unplug your device first, or at least power it off with this, because that minimizes how bad of a power, uh, a brownout, if you will. It's like a lack of a power surge. Um, but that power off sequence doesn't impact you as badly. I don't like how that's implemented. The other thing that's a really weird question mark is this is an audiophile DAC amplifier that does a poor job in exclusive mode because this is not a hardware uh, volume knob. There's pros and cons to this, by the way. There's no channel imbalance at low volume. There's no staticky or clicky sounds when you're adjusting it because it's all digital gain. It's very clean. However, in exclusive mode, every time I change tracks, the volume got louder, like after three or four tracks, dangerously loud. And if your volume is at zero and I'm in exclusive mode and I hit play, it's no longer at zero. I can hear the music. Then the next one plays. And after three or four songs, I can't turn it down, right? You actually have to turn it up more first, then turn it back down to get control over the volume again. Um, it's a really weird design flaw. I really hope that a future firmware update fixes it. They've been doing firmware updates. That's why this review took so long. That's why this review is so long. But there are a couple features of this or gremlins that to me make it a hard, like you should buy this, this is great in every single regard. I don't like that you can't run it in exclusive mode properly. So that about wraps up this incredibly long review. Uh, this is a very feature rich product, so there's no way to make this review short. Uh, hopefully you found the chapters helpful. Um, it's not perfect. I think it does its job well. I will say that the X5 is in a completely unique category. There is no other product like this on the market that I've seen that has this feature set. Where I would improve it, if they got rid of the popping and filtering issues, I don't know how much can actually be fixed with uh, software at this point or firmware updates. Um, I also wish this had an XLR input. I don't know why as a $300 audiophile based product, it's relying only on the uh, 3.5 millimeter input for your mic when you have a balanced output for headphones as well. So I wish the back had an XLR. Maybe they'll come out with an X5 Pro down the road that makes a couple of these changes, you know, metal box, XLR, whatever. Creative, if you're listening, you should do that. Um, I do like it just because of how unique it is and it fills very particular use cases extremely well. So hopefully you found if this is the right product for you or not. If I made it more confusing, I'm super sorry, but I didn't want to leave anything out. So with that being said, thank you so much for making it to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you at the next one. Take care.